Well, uh, thank you, Anna, again, for uh, helping me with my project. Yeah, no problem. Um, so uh, did you know that NASA is planning to send people to the moon in 2024? Ah, uh, yeah, I heard something about that, actually. Uh, I think it was from Trump. <laughs> um, and actually, I visited uh, the Kennedy Space Center in September, and I believe they they also talked about it while I was there. Um, yeah, but you know, what, what I'm unclear about is whether it's if it's just NASA alone who's sending the astronauts or if they're doing it in collaboration with someone like SpaceX. Yeah, uh, this time, I mean, the first time I went to the moon back in uh, 69 to 72, uh, it was all a U.S. effort. You know, there was no joint collaboration uh, mm -hmm. with like other space agencies or the commercial sector. So um, my understanding is they're planning to um, make full use of SpaceX and Blue Origin and uh, you know, ESA and JAXA and all the other space agencies. So it should be okay. quite a deal. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. Well, out of all the interviews that I've uh, done so far, and I think this is about 108, um, yeah. uh, pretty much only like four or five have actually known about it. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, you went to the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, so you have an interest in space. I see your Twitter feed as well. Yeah. Um, and most of the people I interview, I purposely try to find people that aren't interested in space, just to kind of like have that outside in perspective. Uh -huh. But uh, what are some things that NASA should be doing to sort of make people more aware? Um, I think just a lot more publicity, because um, right now it's really just kind of like just really quiet about it. Um, you know, when you think back to how um, in like 69, um, they, how they sort of approached it then was they sort of like humanized the astronauts. They really spent a lot of time following the astronauts, you know, the media did. And I think if they maybe did something similar with this, um, a lot of people would have interest, you know, cause they, they feel that like human connection with the project. Um, I don't know if the astronauts have even been selected yet. I'm assuming they probably have because there's probably a lot of training that needs to be done. Um, but yeah, I think, I think like publicity about the astronauts would be really helpful. Yeah, uh, things have changed a lot since 1969. Um, mm -hmm. You know, pretty much uh, from world leaders to astronauts have Twitter accounts and Facebook pages. And, right. you know, they, they really can have a more direct interaction with people today than, you know, you could. I wonder if that's sometimes overwhelming for them. <laughs> yeah, I wonder too. <laughs> I bet it kind of is. <laughs> I know. You didn't respond to my tweet. Yes, that was one of a million that I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah. Oh, so I mean, they're planning to send a woman uh, as part okay. of that first mission. And that's cool. sort of like uh, one of the headliner uh, things was like last time we did six landings with uh, two white men each. And this time they're definitely planning to send a woman the first time. Uh, mm -hmm. I've gotten mixed reactions on that. A lot of people are like excited, really? you know, it's about time we're doing it. Uh, I've mm -hmm. not gotten any reactions like, oh my gosh, why are they sending a woman? So nothing like that. But the other okay. side of the reaction is like, well, if she's qualified, then yeah, sure, send her type of thing. Okay. So I was wondering um, how that changes your perspective or if it factors into it at all. Uh, you know, I don't think it really changes my perspective. I think it's really cool, though, that they are planning on sending a woman. <laughs> I mean, as a woman myself, you know, it's sort of like, oh, why hasn't that, not, that like already been done? But um but yeah, that is really cool. Yeah, I, I heard some of the reactions from the astronauts on the International Space Station for that first all-female uh, spacewalk. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one hand, they're like, hey, it's great we had this milestone, but it's really good to be past it. And now it's just like normal. You know, it's, right. it's like you kind of want to get, um, it, I mean, it shouldn't really factor into it because it happens all the time. Yeah, right, exactly. Like, we shouldn't have to be making, like, a big deal out of it. Yeah. Um, how much of the apathy towards the moon landing do you think is because people are just like, you know, I don't think it's really going to happen. Why even bother invest any 
mental energy into thinking about it? I, I think that could be part of it. I think we're far enough out where people are just kind of like, okay, you know, who knows what's going to happen at this point. Um, I think part of it also is, you know, since the moon landing has been done before, it makes me wonder if people are just sort of like, oh, you know, it's already been done. It's not that big of a deal, you know, <laughs> when it, I mean, it, it kind of is a big deal. It's still a lot of work, even though we've done it before. Um, but yeah, I, I think that once we get closer to it, people might start paying more attention. Um, I, I, I think that's kind of a big factor. Yeah, that's true. I mean, um, after that first Artemis mission, you might see a lot more excitement. And then mm -hmm. the second Artemis mission, they're actually planning some astronauts around the moon, which, okay. you know, that'd be a big deal. Uh, right. Hopefully in like the 2022, 2023 timeframe, I'm hoping. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, let's see. So uh, in terms of like the investment into space exploration, um, is that something that you think is a, a good social uh, investment? Or do you feel like that maybe we should really focus on priorities here on Earth? I mean, like, how does it factor into sort of like your world? Yeah, so I think space exploration is important. Like when you think about you know, the space program in the 60s and the 70s, so much technology that we use today came out of it. Um, I think people don't really realize like how much of the technology we use today came from it. And so I think in that sense, it helps us back here on Earth too. You know, um, I, and I have no doubt that, you know, there, there's still a lot of innovation, you know, that, that we can benefit from. And um, so I, I think it's important. I, I can understand why people might be like, oh, you know, we have our own issues here. We should be spending money on that. Um, but, you know, yeah, I'm, I guess like from a long term perspective or just a more general perspective, I think space exploration is great. Yeah. Part of the challenges I have with um, like the technology transfer piece is like the first time we went we didn't know what we were doing and we we're literally trying lots of different things and right. inventing new technologies and mm -hmm. it seems like over the years because of the high cost and the high risk it's more and more uh, on off-the-shelf technology which okay. by definition means you're not innovating right I mean you're using stuff right. that's tried and proven uh, mm -hmm. as opposed to things that are really like pushing the envelope so I yeah. just kind of worry about that too like failure is not an option type of yeah, right. mentality. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I suppose that's true. I mean, I guess the, the first moon landing was really special in that way. I mean, yeah, it had never been done before. They had to come up with so much like right on the spot. Yeah. Um, yesterday at our North Houston Space Society meeting, we had a, uh, the manager of the ISS food, um, uh, you know, that, that manages like the food systems for the astronauts. And she was mm -hmm. going into like how to preserve food to have like a five to seven year, uh, you know, shelf life. So you could like actually have enough food for like a Mars mission and things like that. Oh, okay, cool. And you could imagine having that technology actually used to create like a national a food stockpile, you know, where you like have mm -hmm. six months of food for like everybody in the U.S. and you could keep it around for half a decade. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, if it was safe and affordable, uh, would you have an interest in uh, going into orbit? Uh, if it were like 100% safe, yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I know you can't, or like nothing's 100% safe. I mean, you know, but um, I, I think that would be cool to experience. Um, I, I, Sort of, I have a fear of flying, so I, I kind of would probably have to get over that first. But I think, like, uh, in principle, yeah, it would be it would be kind of fun. And yeah, so well, I mean, airline safe would probably be like the standard or something close to that. Yeah. Um, and you know, it'd be very different than I think flying an air airplane. Um, mm -hmm but uh, probably very dramatic, uh, traumatic as well. So I, I just wonder um, if you were to prepare for like a 
orbital trip around the Earth, what are some things you might do to kind of make yourself more at ease with it? Oh, geez. <laughs> I, I don't know. That's like, that's, that's tough. I mean, um, I mean, at least from my, for me, since I have a fear of flying, um, and I'm assuming, yeah, like it would, it would probably be kind of similar. Um, I'd probably, you know, have to work on that. Um, maybe just, you know, taking more flights in general, just to kind of ease myself into it. Um, and, you know, um, it, it makes me also wonder, you know, what kind of training you would have to undergo, um, you know, for like dealing with, um, like G-force during the launch, um, whether there would have to be any training involved there. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I fear is kind of, uh, irrational difficult thing to deal with like I'm scared right. of heights like you put me on a eight-story building and I'm like next to the edge with a guardrail and I'm just like the heart's pounding and I can't yeah. like even look over the edge but mm -hmm. you put me in like a Cessna 172 mm -hmm. which arguably is farther up uh, just as exposed and I feel mm -hmm. fine you know it's just like uh yeah. the way the mind processes what's around it is um very difficult to see any consistency to sometimes right yeah. Um, well, any um, like closing comments or, or thoughts uh, that might be good to capture? Uh, you know, I don't know. I think, I just think, yeah, it's great that we're going back to the moon. You know, I, I, I think that's awesome. <laughs> well, good deal. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'll go ahead and stop the recording now. Okay, great.